Hello, how are you? Uh, good afternoon. This is Rudy Lozano, broker for BRG Platinum. Thank you for joining us in person as well as on, on Zoom. And then, of course, this recording will be on our YouTube channel at uh, Premier Realty Group Platinum. OK, um, as well as all our sessions have been actually on YouTube as well. So uh, a lot of things going on. Um, I've been logging on to different chats and such. And I want to start off um, right off by telling you guys, I know that there's a lot of listing agents telling you the compensation is subject to your offer. Uh, um, and that is not the case, guys. That is not the case. You as the listing broker and listing agent are sitting down with that seller, taking on the listing, negotiating uh, uh, what your uh, list price is going to be and therefore the compensation because now it's full transparency, right? Mr. Seller, my opinion of value is this. It is my professional opinion that you need because you need to sell your home quickly that we're going to collect 6% compensation because we need a cooperating broker to bring us a past buyer or a pre-approved buyer. So that way you can sell your home. Okay. So when you're taking on that listing, you're, you're providing an opinion of value. You're disclosing what commission you are going to charge for your service, whether they're limited or full service. Okay. And as outlined in the exclusive right to list. Line item 5A, if they are offering compensation to the other broker, line 5A, 1A, that is where you're going to put the commission. Let's say it's 6%. Okay? And it clearly states at the bottom, if broker does not pay the other broker that prefers a buyer as specified in paragraph 5A2, broker's fee in this paragraph 5A1, your charging six will be reduced by any amount not paid to the other broker. Okay? So when they're telling you it's subject to your offer, they're already in violation of their listing agreement. Furthermore, it goes on to state, if the other broker prefers a buyer that purchases this property, seller authorizes broker to pay the other broker, will pay the other broker the following fee, from amount specified in 5A1. A, if the other broker represents the buyer, 3% of the sales price. In the previous line, you were already being told that the buyer, if the seller didn't procure a, a buyer, that they would rebate the portion that they were supposedly going to cooperate, right? So the next section is ever so crucial, guys. An exclusive right to list is a contract. We call it a listing agreement, but no doubt about it, it is a contract. And let me tell you this, line item 5A3 states, seller authorizes broker to publicly disclose compensation for the other broker as specified in 5A2. So you already took on the listing saying that you're gonna do it for six, Okay, outline in 5A, uh, 5A, you're already stating that on 5A, that you're going to split 3%. Number three is telling you that as part of your exclusive right to list, that the seller authorizes broker to publicly disclose compensation for the other broker specified in 5A2. You're being authorized to put it, yeah, you can't put it on MLS. You can put it on social media, as well as you can put it on your website. It, you can have it on your listing. You can have a um, you, you can have a link on your email. You can, you can have a QR code, but it is your fiduciary responsibility to share the compensation publicly as instructed by your exclusive right to list, which once again is a contract. We call it an agreement, but it's a contract. It's a performance contract. The next item. Okay, the, the listing agent cannot hold the compensation hostage. They're not reading this form. Oh, it's subject to your offer? No, you've already renegotiated that. 
your opinion of value, the compensation the firm was going to charge, how much you were going to um, uh, and entice a buyer's agent to bring you a fat fire or a qualified buyer, it already outlines that 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 six percent you're not entitled to it as the listing broker. So why hold the compensation hostage? Because the next line becomes ever so crucial. Broker will retain amount specified in five a one as broker's fee if there is no other broker that prefers the buyer. There's no other broker, including but not limited to transactions where broker represents both seller and buyer through intermediary or buyer is unrepresented. Amount specified in 5A2 will be applied towards any fee a buyer has agreed to pay broker as specified in a separate written uh, written representation agreement. Because remember, when you do intermediary, you still need a buyer's rep agreement for the buyer, even though both agents are from the office, okay? So once again, listing agents and their brokers really need to sit down and understand that it is, it, it, they're in violation of the listing agreement if they try to hold the compensation hostage. That will lead only to additional lawsuits because you're going to get sued for not following the listing agreement. You're going to get sued because here you're thinking that, oh, well, I'm going to offer one. You know, I'm already going to keep three. Maybe I'll keep two. Well, the exclusive right to list clearly outlines under what conditions you can keep both compensation. The broker can keep all the compensation only through intermediary and if there is an unrepresented buyer. But if they do not procure the buyer, they and they took on the listing, if 5A2 states that they're going to pay three, they better be marketing 3%. Because what's going to happen is this, guys, for those listing agents and brokers that haven't sat down to study this, the ramifications are going to be as follows. Mary, I hired you to list my property. We talked about the opinion of value, and you gave me data that supported that opinion of value. Number two, I told you that I was good paying compensation because I needed a report to New York because I was going to take on a raise for $100,000 and because I didn't want to make double mortgage payments. Okay? And then all of a sudden, you decided, I, I signed an exclusive right to list. Didn't I tell you that I wanted to pay 3%? I even offered to pay a bonus. And you weren't advertising the compensation that's outlined in 5A3. Seller authorizes broker to publicly disclose compensation for the other broker specified in 5A2. So you violated our contract. Your firm violated our contract. Well, guess what? You've cost me money. I can't take that job in your door. I can't afford to make double mortgage payments. I've only been, my house has been sitting for for three and six months because you're holding the compensation hostage. This agreement clearly states that you were supposed to prepare a buyer for you to keep all the compensation, which I didn't mind. But you needed to market the compensation. You're in violation of our exclusive right to list. I'm not only going to file a complaint against you, your broker with, with Tread and Tom, but I'm going to jump on a bandwagon and get you sued because you weren't transparent with the compensation. You're, you were deceptive. You misrepresented me, okay? So for those brokers out there and agents out there, read the exclusive right to list. You need to read it a million times. You need to comprehend it, digest it, and be able to explain it to your respective clients, okay? This is only the beginning, guys. If we don't protect our industry agent by agent by broker, we will see the extinction of our industry because people cannot comprehend the forms, okay? So once again, if anybody needs further clarification, I hope that you refer to this video on the compensation. If you want to forward it over to a listing agent so that way they can share it with their broker, I wouldn't mind even jumping on a call with another agent and another broker. Because once again, guys, it will not end up well for our industry. So in your darkest hour, you must have faith and you must have courage, but you must have integrity to always do the right thing. So best of luck. Okay.
Moving on to the next thing, full transparency, guys. Not only should the compensation be full tra fully transparent, the next line becomes ever so crucial. Uh, it's it's actually part of five, which is the broker compensation. Clearly, it states no authorization authorization to disclose seller paying buyers expenses. Seller does or does not. If your seller tells you, I need to sell my home, price it right, <laughs> um, market the compensation, and then furthermore, I'm willing to pay for buy downs, for closing costs. I'm willing to do whatever I need, but I need my house sold. I cannot afford to make double mortgage payments. I need to take this job in another city or in another state or in another country. If my house doesn't sell, I'm in. It's 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 gonna change my 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 journey. I don't want to stay here in San Antonio or wherever you're from. Okay, there's no incentive like the financial one. People don't wake out of bed and get and get dressed up to go work in a hundred degree weather. And for many of you realtors that worked yesterday in this rain, most people called in sick or just didn't leave their house. Right. So there's no incentive like the financial, okay? So if you know upfront that they're paying you your full compensation, and furthermore, they're, they're offering closing costs, which opens up you know, the possibility of a buy down and a, a lower monthly payment for the buyer, it becomes a win-win for everybody. Because then your job, no doubt about it, guys, the buyer's agent gets paid for one thing and one thing only, and that is to prepare a buyer. A cash buyer or somebody that has financing with your pre approval. Guard your baby, guard your client. And let's talk about that. Um, switching over to the buyer side. We call them agreements, but they're contracts, they're employment contracts. So, um, they're employment contracts, guys. When you take on a buyer, uh, as a client, you're telling the buyer that um, when you uh, when you do your buyer's orientation, you talk about a lot of things. You talk about income, assets, and credit. You arrange financing. You get them pre-qualified or pre-approved. Okay. You talk about price point. Okay. And then now you need to talk about the compensation. Okay. Mr. Buyer, the market has changed. I am required to disclose a couple of forms that you will sign for me here shortly. In gist, the compensation is now negotiable. It comes from four buckets. From the seller, from the builder, from sales concessions, because I'm a master negotiator, I can negotiate that for you. Uh, and whatever difference comes from you. That's what these forms say. Okay? But I need to be transparent. So... Now I have a, a, a scenario for you. They're telling me that you only have money. Do you have money for your down payment? Yes. Do you have money for your clothing costs? Yes. Now, in a situation that, um, that let, let, let's say I expose you to a home and the seller is unable and unwilling to pay for my compensation, are you willing to pay for my compensation? What happens if they say no? If they say no, you say, okay, so what, what, what I'm hearing is you have your down payment, you have your closing costs, but under no, no circumstances do you want me to expose you to a property where they're not paying compensation. Okay, so just for an example, uh, you're looking in Alamo Ranch or Northside Independent School District. There might be 10 houses. I might be able to show you eight or nine houses, but that one house, I will not market that house. I will not expose you to it because the seller's already stating that they're not going to pay compensation. And if they're, if they're not paying compensation, they're probably not paying closing costs. And you're wanting a better rate and buy downs and come to the table with the least amount of money. It is my fiduciary duty to protect your interests. And therefore, I'm not going to expose you to a house that you're going to fall Google Dog in love with and you don't have the money to be able to consummate the transaction. Okay? You're not my customer. You're not a prospect. You are my client. It's like if you were building a home, right? You want a one story, right? No steps. 
in a certain school district, I'm doing pretty much the same thing. I'm listening to you. Today, our meeting, our buyer's orientation has to do with, are we a good fit? Am I going to take you on as a client? Okay. Based on your needs, are you being realistic? Do you have income assets credit? Can you pull off the sale? But furthermore, is there inventory that I have to be able to expose you, which meets your family's needs? And what you're telling me right now, and I'm listening to you, is that you do not have the compensation. Therefore, I will expose a majority of the homes, but that one home that is clearly not paying compensation, they probably won't be paying closing costs either. Um, uh, uh, we probably will not be looking at that home, okay? Um, because you're taking them on as a client. You need to listen to your client. If they tell you they don't have the compensation and there's eight or nine houses in that community, expose them to the other eight or nine yes. communities. He's like, no, I have these and I need it. How would they know that it's even on the market? Your baby Zillow or Realtor.com. But, yeah. but once again, when you they come and sit here with you and you take on, uh, when you do your buyer's orientation and list all the things you're going to do for them, you need to ask that question. Well, it's kind of like, okay, you're not listening to me. I clearly told you that I wanted a one story. Why are we, what are we doing looking at just one story? Okay. They told me her family. Because I, I stayed with them before. Okay, can, can we keep them on enough work so that way we don't get lost? Okay. So what ends up happening is this, is that listen to your client. If your client is telling you, I want a, a one story, no steps, because my, my, my mother is with me and she's handicapped, um, and uh, I want a pool. I want the school district. And and no, I'm so sorry. Do, do, um, I do not have the money to pay for your compensation in the event it's not being offered. Okay. Well, great. I'll expose you to nine out of the 10 homes in a certain subdivision. Okay. That is um, filtering criteria. Okay. It is not steering. It is not discrimination. And it is not redlining. It's the criteria under which you are going to take them as, on as a client and you need to listen to them if they're telling you. I mean, his clients get upset. What are you doing? I told you I didn't want to be on this side of town. We're not even in the right school district. I already told you that I couldn't pay. Why are we even seeing this house? You're going to have the same conversation. Listen to your client, okay? Because remember, you know, when if you listen to your client and you start asking those questions, and before you even start talking about school districts and, and um, you know, those, those kinds of things, you haven't even gotten there. You're talking about if you and I are going to be a good fit, okay? Income assets credit, uh, you know, filtering criteria. Um, and um, you have already mentioned the compensation. And then, of course, you're going to transition into the one bedroom, the school district, you know, no steps, you know, backing up to a green belt. Once again, it's just criteria, okay? Right. So once again, it's not discrimination. It's not redlining. You know, it's not steering. OK, it is. These are your needs. This is your request. And I'm the professional. I am going to show you property that you're requesting. OK, so. Um, so moving on, guys. Uh, Tina. Tina. Um, So, does anybody have a question online? Okay, and I guess we'll do it later. Um, well, wanted to talk to you guys about compliance right off the bat so that you realize that what we're doing, we are going, we used to, we take great pride, guys. I hear terrible stories from other brokerages where they don't even get CDAs out. Um, a check comes to the broker at five o'clock on a Friday, you don't get paid till Tuesday, the day after a national holiday. We don't do that around here. 99% of our CDAs are, are sent to title within um, uh, at least 10 days before closing, okay? And now they're gonna get there even quicker, okay? Because no doubt about it, who's driving the CD these days is the lender, okay? So you see at all ends, we have talked to property managers, in the last 30 to 60 days, we have talked to property managers that want to see your buyer's rep agreement. Apartment complexes that want to see your buyer's rep agreements. And here's a builder. 
We just sent out yet this yesterday, guys. Okay, this is going to be the norm from a major builder, Highland Homes. At the bottom, it's the realtor addendum having to do with your compensation. And I'm going to read it to you now. Feller offers to pay the lesser of 3% of the sales price or the fee commission stated in buyer's representation agreement with the broker upon closing and funding of the sale. Buyer has delivered, has or has not delivered to seller a copy of the buyer's representation agreement with the broker. The stated fee commission is, it's the fee that you have on your buyer's rep agreement of the sales price or that dollar figure. It's either the percentage or the dollar figure. So once again, best practices to use a percentage, guys. Do not use a dollar figure because you might start in the 200,000s and end up at 600,000. And then you already put a dollar figure. So do percentages, okay? The most important thing on this form, seller will not pay any commission to a broker if the representation agreement is not delivered to seller within 10 business days of signing this sales agreement. And that, guys, is very generous. They're giving you 10 days from the date that you write them up. If you write them up on the first, they have to get that buyer's rep agreement within 10 days by the 11th. To the construction. To the builder. The builder. To the builder. Oh, okay. We're already starting. We're already seeing it from property managers. It's a way of them not. If you don't have a buyer's rep agreement, guys, they don't have to pay you the compensation. Wow. Okay. You're not even supposed to show rentals. You're not even supposed to even show a property mm -hmm. if you do not have at least a short form. Because then they're your prospect, or they're your, a consumer, or you're or you're pondering in sub agency. Sub agency doesn't exist in the state of Texas. Only one condition which is an unrepresented buyer on, on an intermediary transaction. That is the only time that somebody will function as a subagent and be in compliance. But you either represent the seller through an exclusive ranking list, or you represent the buyer through a buyer's rep agreement, the short term or the long term, we don't care. But you cannot show houses, you cannot show apartments, you cannot show a rental without it. You're in violation of national policy state policy through TREC, through TAR, through SABOR. Now with SABOR, you're clicking on something stating that you have a buyer's rep agreement in place. So the listing agent has every right to ask you for that agreement because it's, what it's going to do is that it's going to be a compliance piece, guys. Because if you go into a transaction and you're not representing and you didn't sign up the buyer through an agreement, the listing agent can't te technically isn't supposed to pay you. The builder's not supposed to pay you. The landlord's not supposed to pay you, and also the apartment complex. So once again, get your buyer's rep agreements executed. I'm going to cover them next. It's not that difficult, you know. Um, I'm going to give you a couple of scripts that I'm using, you know, to get through them, uh, and uh, that that way you can secure them. People are going into so much detail on them that you're freaking them out. Don't do that. Don't do that. And then I'm going to transition into that. Um, the, um, do the next one for me real quick. Um, so the next uh, form that I'm going to cover with you guys is absolutely crucial. Okay. Because, I mean, there's even been a, a newer uh, revision dated August 24th, which actually happened like on a Saturday uh, a couple of weeks ago. Uh, but TXR Form 2701 is an amendment to the representation agreement, okay? Any exclusive right to list or any buyer's representation executed prior to June 24th has to have this form. Because what it is is that the if you took on the client in January, February, March, or April, May, or June, okay, or an exclusive right to list, the property's been sitting, it doesn't have the NAR settlement required language. It's a compliance form. It brings in your exclusive right to list and your buyer's rep agreement into compliance, okay? The form is dated June 24th, okay? And there's been other revisions. There's one August 25th, but they need you to sign this 
because I know that U.S. agents are concerned about the compensation, and you should be, okay? However, uh, supervisors, uh, designated supervisors, brokers, owners of real estate companies, you know, all anybody in the teaching capacity, anybody having to do with say we're in NAR and TAR, or, you know, we're more concerned about being in compliance with the lawsuit, okay? And this form brings your, let's say, for example, the form, it's amendment to representation agreement, PXR 2701, dated June 24th. You signed your exclusive right to list or your buyer's representation. The first blank would be March 1st, right, of this year, effective today's date, okay, for all representation agreements. Broker compensation or the sharing of compensation between brokers is not set by law nor theft, controlled, recommended, or suggested by the Association of Realtors, MLS, or any listing service. Broker compensation is fully negotiable. Brokers independently determine their fees. Once again, it's going out on a limb telling a buyer or seller that real estate commissions negotiable. That's all that statement states. For listing agreements, the client's name and the property address, and then paragraph eight, it brings paragraph eight into compliance, includes payment of compensation to the other broker working with a buyer or tenant. Client authorizes broker to compensate the other broker as, indi as indicated in paragraph 8A, okay? So if your previous listing agreement, this was an opportunity for a seller to go, no, I don't want to pay compensation, but they doubt it. If their house has been sitting, they definitely want to, are paying compensation by this point. But either way, it was an option. Paragraph 8B is deleted, okay? But uh, for buyer and tenant representation agreement, Broker is prohibited from receiving compensation for brokerage services from any source that exceeds the amount stated in the representation agreement. In other words, guys, if DR Ford is paying 7% and your buyer's agreement states three, you better have the long form that kicks it up to seven, or you better have an amendment to make the difference. To make up the difference. Okay. So you have to bring your buyer's rep agreement into compliance. First, it must be signed and dated before you enter the new contract. Oh, okay. okay. If, you, if you know that you're going to go see the builder on Friday, you better have your buyer's rep agreement in compliance, knowing that they're going to sign with deal or, or somebody paying four, five, six, and seven, right? Your buyer's rep agreement must match the compensation being offered by the seller or the builder, okay? So, because they can't pay you more than that, because otherwise they're going to have to do a price reduction or they're going to have to uh, pay additional closing costs for the buyer, but that compensation doesn't go to you. If your buyer's rep agreement says three, you're getting three, even though the builder's offering seven, and now they're going to require to see it. So once again, guys, get ready. Builders are ready. We started yesterday. Get those buyer's rep agreements in place. So I'm gonna cover the short form first. The, the short form TXR 1507. The short form is, is at the bottom, TXR 1507. Uh, all the forms at the bottom left. Uh, so it's TXR for 1507. It's the, the short form. So I don't know. Okay. Can, we, can we talk afterwards? Okay. Because they're not going to hear you and, and stuff. So we'll talk afterwards. Um, so I'm, I'm, I'm going to cover the short form, guys. Do your buyer's representation, guys. Our office is open 24-7 to include Saturdays and Sundays. Do not do your buyer's orientation at a Starbucks, at uh, Palenque Grill, or, or Taqueria Jalisco, whatever. Don't do it. Don't do it to yourself. Don't do it. Don't do it at a coffee shop where there's other people talking or anything. Do it it's somewhere quiet where it's professional, okay? Um, like I said, everybody has access to the office seven days a week. You know, uh, if, you, if you're going to be here during, during, uh, during uh, regular business hours, 
call the office and reserve one of the offices or the conference room, and we'll make sure that you have the privacy that you need to conduct business, okay? With the short form, don't make it too complicated. If you guys are are, are, uh, are uh, doing um, uh, open houses, they can walk from the home. I mean, there's a lot of like misinformation online you represent the seller. That's the reason that you guys cannot do open houses for your friends at different brokerages and other agents cannot do open houses for our firm because the, if they do walk in and they are already not working for that brokerage, yes, they do need a buyer's representation agreement, okay? And there's a couple of companies that, you know, that that that's how they get business. They They do the open house for the listing agent with the intent of, Running into your seller and taking away your business. So I'm 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 not a fan of people from our not from our organization doing your open houses, okay. But at the end of the day, if it's another agent from our office, you already the the listing agent already has an exclusive right to list, which already authorizes intermediary. So you don't need a buyer's rep agreement when doing open houses, okay. Um, number one. Now, obviously, you want to hook them right. Because if they don't like your house and there's three other houses in the community, I mean, obviously, you always want to carry your information about brokerage services as well as the short form. Hey, new rules, new changes. I'm sure you heard about some lawsuit having to do with the compensation. The seller now has the option to pay or not. But you know what? I'm going to keep it very simple. You're going to sign this agreement for me. Uh, it's, you know, today's Sunday. You're just signing it for the following Sunday because that way it gives me an opportunity to service you today through next weekend. And then uh, that way we can determine if we you know, we want to work together. So, but don't worry about it. The compensation comes from four buckets from the seller, from the builder. I'm a master negotiator. I'm trying, I'm, I'm going to try to get it through concessions or number four, uh, any difference you would be responsible for. But we'll, we'll, we'll talk about that when we get to that point. Okay. Right now, I just really need you to sign my forms. And then that way we can start our journey today and try to make the next two hours as productive as possible. I really think you're going to like house number three. It sounds like what you're looking for, but I need you to sign this because I can't I can't even make the appointment without actually you signing these two forms, information about brokerage services, as well as the short form buyer's rep agreement. Keep it simple. Keep it simple. If you wanted to start off at 3%, just put 3%. Do not ever, 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 ever put dollar figure or I'm going to show you three houses for $150. Don't do that. Okay. Very quickly. The parties, you and them, definitions, Bear County, the surrounding areas, the term, I would at least do two weeks, or at least take it into the following weekend, so that way you can service them Saturday and Sunday into the following Sunday, that way you can visit with them during the week, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, at least do a combined two weekends, okay? Uh, many people are doing 30 days, you know, and some people are doing even six months with it. At the end of the day, it doesn't matter whether it's the short form or the long form, you're good. The only reason you want to update to the long form is in the event that you end up with a custom home and you know a six month project, those kinds of things. Okay. Uh, but always number eight, intermediary. If they went to your open house, it's our listing. One of the incentives of signing with you is that we're a large organization. Okay. Is that they get, they would have first access to any inventory before it hits the market. Because most people say, hey, I have a listing, it's coming out on uh, on Friday and here it is Monday. You might already be you know, scheduling an appointment on Wednesday prior to it going live because it's our listing, okay? Mm -hmm. So uh, uh, so once again, keep it simple. Keep it simple, don't make it too complicated. I, You need to spend 30 seconds or no more than a minute explaining the documents. You appointments, definition, the term, brokers compensation. I offer only full services, okay? Uh, client's obligation. Once again, you're not my prospect. You're not a consumer. Uh, you are my client. You're, you're my client. This form, and write this down, this form allows me to go to work for you and your family, okay? So um, the compensation, I'm going to try to get it from one of those four buckets. Um, and then, of course, in intermediary, you will have the exclusive, you will be the first one, you know, to know about any inventory for another house in the school district, in this community, et cetera. 
because we have a lot of agents and we have a lot of listings. Okay. Thank you, Justine. Let's go. Let's roll. Let's do the fun part. Mm -hmm. Okay. Let's do the fun part. Okay. The long form. Okay. So once your, your short form expires and they already like you after two weeks and you realize that, uh, uh, you know, you know the same people and you go to the same church, you know, and those kinds of things, uh, you're complaining about your husbands or your wives, whatever, you know, or you're talking about your children. I mean, whatever. Okay. Uh, or the football game and the football team. And, but do not talk about Trump and, 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 and politics or nothing like that. Please. It's not going to end that well. Never talk about politics or religion. Okay. Would be my suggestion. And you could end up in the pool for the fist fight. Anyways, transitioning to the long form. It's more detailed, but you want to transition to the long form because by then there's, they like you. Um, you know, it's more than I just met you. And then by that time, you've already probably, and if you, you should have as part of your, uh, let's see, let come back. I'm actually going to not move on to the long form, guys. The one that I'm going to cover next is, or do you have them in order? Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, the compensation amongst brokers. Okay. So you've already secured the short form to work with your buyer. Uh, and um, you immediately quickly call the agent to verify what the compensation is or logged on to their website. Uh, remember, guys, we are a 100% fully transparent company. Be by, before the end of this week, any and all listings have to be on our website disclosing full compensation because that will bring our industry, you personally, and our brokerage a lot of problems because we must follow your exclusive right to list and we will respect it to the very end. So uh, conversely, this is the form compensation agreement between broker. One is broker owner, which is like a for sale by owner. And of course, I mean, you definitely don't want to get off with your client with a um, uh, for sale by owner without negotiating your commission first. Okay. Compensation between um, the broker and the owner. That's like a for sale by owner. Mr. For sale by owner, I'm bringing you a qualified buyer or you better be waiting in the truck. I can't get, I, 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 they can't walk through your home unless you agree to pay me my compensation. I need you to sign this. I, I'd rather you not do it with them in the truck. But at, at, the, at the end of the day, uh, you have to pre-negotiate it before exposing your client. That is your fiduciary duty, especially if your buyer's representation once again states that they do not have money to pay you for your compensation, that they would prefer that you not market any property or expose them to any property where they might be responsible for the compensation, whether it's a for sale by owner, a regular listing, or even a builder, okay? So um, the other form, of course, is the most common one, okay? Which is, a second. compensation agreement between brokers. Like I said, the exclusive right to list has already been secured. They have already told the seller that they were gonna, their opinion of value is this, that 6% of that is this. They've already probably done a net sheet and then they're being authorized to pay. They're disclosing how much of the 6% will be shared with the other brokerage. And line item three, authorizes the brokerage and the agent to market that compensation in efforts to procure a buyer because they have elected to be one of those sellers that does want to pay compensation, okay? So once again, compensation agreement between brokers. There's people that are telling you 
Well, it depends on your offer. No, it doesn't. You already took on the exclusive right to list. You are not following your exclusive right to list. You are failing your client horribly by, by, by playing games with the compensation. You will find yourself in an ethics committee. You will find yourself in a lawsuit, you know, because does your seller even know that you're doing this? Because they could easily get a, an, an, an anonymous letter in the mail or they'll, or you could always make the appointment, guys. And go, uh, BRA compensation uh, needs to be confirmed. At, I'm sorry, buyer um, uh, shared compensation needs to uh, never confirm shared compensation to be in compliance with BRA. Because if your buyer's representation, your fiduciary duties to your buyer, your buyer's telling you they don't have the money, you have the right on feedback to put unable to confirm compensation make the appointment, get the seller to clean their house on a Sunday or on a Saturday or on a Wednesday, make the appointment, and then you have every right to cancel that, that appointment because the compensation was not ever confirmed. They didn't text it, email it to you, send you a QR code, so it isn't on their website. You have every right to dictate what you expose your client to. It's your responsibility. Fiduciary duty, guys. What is a fiduciary? It's people that take our, um, that are authorized to take care of other people. If I can't leave my children with you, and if I can't leave my 84-year-old grandmother or mother with you, you cannot function in a fiduciary capacity. So here you have a school teacher, you know, telling you that she doesn't have the compensation. Take care of her. She told you she didn't have the compensation. Follow your buyer's representation agreement. You already talked about the filthy. I didn't want to see a one story or a two story, and I told you I didn't have the compensation, and I didn't want to be in that other school district across town. You need to listen listen to your client, okay? Mm -hmm. So once again, make the appointment. Politely say, I'm so sorry. I have a full day. Uh, never uh, uh, Compensation uh, was never confirmed to be in compliance with BRA. And when they call you and that seller, what do you mean they're not going to show up? I spent the last two hours doing 10 loads of laundry, cleaning this house. When it dropped off my cat and my dog and my, 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 my mother's, and then they canceled because you couldn't confirm? You know, sign something? Shouldn't that be in a website or something? Couldn't you have picked up the phone? Who's going to reimburse me for my last three hours? Of, I mean, I needed to clean my house anyways, but okay. So I was so about it. It's okay. It is the fiduciary duty of the listing agent to open the house. Like let's say somebody from Houston or somebody from Del Rio. It's the, the fiduciary duty of the agent to open up the property. And there's like ranches and high dollar properties, luxury listings that the listing agent needs to be present. Right? Mm -hmm. Well, it's their fiduciary duty to disclose the compensation as well lack thereof will get them into a lot of trouble, okay? So once again, compensation agreement between brokers. They can text it, they can email it to you, refer them to their website. There's gotta be a QR code. Like in our case, if they, if, you, if, we, if you're fully integrated, your profile and broker IDX is updated, your profile and, and, and Sabor is fully updated, there is an RSS feed that they can click on your profile. And it will take them to our website. They could put the address. They could put you as an agent. They could put the MLS. And they can find the compensation on our website. Okay? But we are going to be, I want to repeat this again. We will be 100% fully transparent in efforts to av uh, avoid being involved in misrepresentation, deceptive trade practices, not upholding fiduciary duties, and flat-out fraud. You came to my house. You said you were going to charge me 6% and you messed with the compensation. You sat on it and it cost me money. No, sir. I'm going to get an attorney. I'm already getting a phone call from an attorney. I'm going to sue you because it took me four months to sell my house rather than 30 to 45 days because you decided to play with the compensation. Okay. Imagine being that guy. Okay. So compensation agreement between brokers. It is the fiduciary duty of the buyer's agent on behalf of their buyer to ensure that this is executed. 
preferably prior to you submitting your offer. But hopefully you have some type of confirmation. If you go to their website, take a picture of it, print it out, do whatever you need to cover your assets. Okay. Get them to sign this. Okay. Um So we talked about it, the short form, um, where you, you're going to take it on at three or four percent, whatever, however you want to do it. Just hook the client, um, get them to like you, show what you're going to do for them, razzle dazzle them with your knowledge, and uh, you know that, that you know you're an expert in the Stone Oak area or in in a, a Timberwood Park or whatever your 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 specialty is, and then. If the compensation differs, doesn't matter if it's the short form or the long form. But if your short form expired, you have to extend it. So rather than extending to the long form, or you can use form PXR 2406. And this uh, will, um, will not only um, increase the fees that they're, that, um, let's say that you uh, go to a builder, um, or or they've been a lot of work in four months and you're going to charge more. This 20, uh, TXR2406 is the addendum to increase the compensation. Okay. Um, oops. Okay. So now I'm going to cover the long form. And the long form is TXR fifteen o one, TXR fifteen o one, and and like I said, you you want to start off with the short form. Don't freak out the consumer or the prospect. Make them your client. Let them know that you're going to add value. That you're a master negotiator. Let them know about your experience in insurance and mortgage and real estate. Whatever you need to tell them that you're familiar with the area, that you're from San Antonio, that you live in the community, whatever, you know, whatever you feel that you need to tell them. Uh, but certainly you, you you do have to let them know that if they, they do not sign the short form and the information about brokerage services, um, that uh, unfortunately you can't even schedule the appointments to look at those three other homes. It's a short term commitment to determine if you guys are a good fit. But once again, you need those two forms signed because it authorizes you to go to work for them. Okay. Okay. Because you are not a prospect. You're not a consumer. You are my client. I am required by law to put your interests above my own. Okay. And I have a family too. And I have children too. And I'm listening to, I know the criteria that you want to need. I, I, you know, I, I sell real estate. I have options for you in the existing market and the new home market. We're going to take care of you and your family, okay? Because this is what I do for a living, okay? So uh, be professional, be professional. Mm -hmm. uh, but the long form um, is where you want to tighten everything up. Uh, extend it maybe through December. Uh, there's many folks that are extending it an entire year at that moment, especially if they're in they're doing new construction. Uh, we have folks that are extending it two years, knowing that they're in the custom home arena or they're over a million dollars. And of course, on commercial and farm and ranch, those normally are for a year or two years. Okay, because that's a lot of work. It's a lot of maintenance and stuff. So um, so once again, client, the broker, definitions, the marketplace, okay? Um, and the term you want to extend it. I would not um, do less than... Um, I don't know, four to six months, if if they're looking in the existing market or the or the or the spec home market because they need something before the end of the year. The baby's coming in December, kind of thing. They need to be in a house in September, October, November. Okay, uh, but if you want to sign it up for a year, great, 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 great. So <laughs> the compensation on a seven a, you want to put your three and four percent. Okay. Because whatever's not mentioned here, if you have to do an amendment, whatever started there has to. Um, I have a question. Do the amendment is if you sign before the the buyer draft before August fifteen? 
Uh, which one? The, the, the amendment to the Boyer. No, no, no. If, yes, if it was uh, before June 24th. Uh -huh. So, because we have lit listings that have been sitting um, but since you, January. What you have to find is the long form. Uh, yes, I'm, I'm absolutely. I'm, I'm just talking about if you if you've been working with a buyer. Yeah. Uh, January, February, right? Yeah. Okay, you need to bring that buyer's rep agreement into compliance. Okay, and that's the amendment. Same thing with your exclusive right to this. Uh, in that case, use the new forms because now they're required. They love, they love uh, you can, however you want to do it, will respect both. If you already know you're going to write them up and you have the short form, you might just want to do an amendment to the short form. Amend them, right? Uh, you can, but once again, they, they have to sign off on your increased compensation. I mean, or you could do the long form and say, I, um, I'm needing to update my, my paperwork for my broker, you know, and then just, you know, zoom through it and disclose it at the time. When you get to the compensation, I have a range for the compensation to be taken care of by the seller, or in this case, by the builder. You don't have to worry about the compensation. But in the meantime, let's recap. The builder did a $25,000 price reduction. They're paying all of your closing costs. They're securing a 2.9 or a 3.9 or a 4.9, and they're going to take care of my compensation. Okay? I just need you to sign my paperwork. Okay? Mm -hmm. Once again, there, there's a work workaround. Do not go through the five pages and confuse them. You don't have people's attention that long. It's kind of like social media. They want they want the high points, the term, how much, how much it's going to cost them, and everything that that you're going to do for them. Okay. Everything else is just you know stuff that needs to be disclosed. You know, hey, I'm going to get it to you. You know, but the main thing is that I've already negotiated your contract. You know those things. Okay. And 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 this is going to be in tune with the contract we're going to sign on Friday. Okay. Uh, and let's go, because I can't take you there if I don't have this updated, okay? Because that's when you're able to go, right? I mean, because if they can show up Tuesday, you better have it ready before Tuesday, mm -hmm. okay? So just update your short form to the long form would, would be my suggestion. I'm not a fan of using the amendment because then you have to just fully disclose and it has to be fully authorized by them at that moment. And at that moment, you will need to have that discussion of, of your compensation and if you're going to do a rebate and stuff, okay? Uh, there's ways to explain things if they know that, you know, hey, the maximum compensation that a builder can pay on an FHA, VA, USDA, and conventional deal is because HUD has guidelines. HUD uh, authorizes on trade loans, FHA, VA, USDA, and conventional up to 8% compensation. Okay, well, the builder is very close to the, to the max. They're going to pay me seven, but you don't have to worry about that. It's not coming out of your pocket. Okay, but the max is eight. I'm only getting seven. Mm -hmm. Okay, so please sign. <laughs> We've been a pleasure to work with. <laughs> so, once again, the broker compensation is on here. And then, um, and everything is the same. Pretty much. I mean, you always want to check off, you know, intermediary um there's a lot of information uh now on on, on line item number 17 what you want to do is actually um uh, if you're if you're going to work with out of town people like people from mexico yeah. from investors or whatever on I, line item 17 you want to collect a retainer fee okay remember that all money needs to be made out to the broker OK, the people that I have worked with from Mexico or from California, because they're thinking you're some some type of glorified tour guide. So bless you, bless you. You want to collect a retainer fee. Hey, I'm going to collect a retainer fee of twenty five hundred dollars. It needs to be made payable to my broker um, so that way I can go to work for you because, hey, I'm putting my family, I'm pulling other clients to the side. And, um, you know, um, Friday, Saturday and Sunday. And if you buy, it gets rebated back to you. Are closing, but if you don't buy, well, this is liquidated damage. This is twenty five, twenty five hundred, or thirty five hundred, or five. Yeah, yeah. at least one. At least it, it really depends on the price point. If you're dealing with somebody with a million dollar home, I would it, it needs to be at least five thousand dollars. Because if they have a million dollar, if they if they're going to buy a million dollar home, a five thousand dollar retainer fee is it's a drop in the bucket for them. Okay, but if you're in a lower price point, fifteen hundred to twenty five hundred. But if you're in a higher price point, five thousand. Once again. You're letting them know that because they're from out of town, 
and you're putting everything on, on the side for them, that it allows you to go to work for them. And this is a retainer fee that in good faith, you're here in good faith, but I mean, I still have to cover my expenses. It's expensive to be a realtor. Okay. Mm -hmm. So you will pay this retainer fee. You'll get a square invoice from Mr. Clint. It needs to be prepaid. We'll receive it in and cut it back to you. Uh, but then at closing, when, when you close, we if, if, if you do close, we'll reimburse it back to you. Okay. But if you buy nothing, our firm gets to keep this money. Okay. Is that fair? Yeah, absolutely. You know, you're blocking out time. You're going to go pick us up at the airport. You're going to wine us and dine us, join us for dinner. You're going to show me everything in the moon and at the Dominion or whatever, Cordillera Ranch, which is far. <laughs> right? So once again, that's what attorneys do, guys. Attorneys collect. I've never, ever, ever saw the attorney that I work for collect less than five or $10,000 as a retainer fee. Because for him to even sit there and study it, you know, and then he had advice and opinion, you know, and then he was, sometimes he was dealing with millions of dollars. And I said, oh no, I'm going to read mm -hmm. all weekend and read the complexity. And there's like 20 brothers and sisters and nephews and grandchildren who owns what, what interest, what percentage is, you know, he was very meticulous and da, 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 da. And he couldn't be bothered when he was studying a case, but he, he charged at least, I, the, the least I saw was five, but it was commonly $10,000. And I know that family law, if you're so, you need to get somebody to get you divorced, it's, it's been paying five or $10,000. You're being convicted of a crime, right? It's 10 or 20 to $30,000, right? So once again, you can collect retainer fees. You're the professional, they need you. You speak their language, you know, you know their culture. You know, you're you're bringing something to 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 the table that other people might not have, right? Know your worth, guys. Negotiate from a position of strength, okay, not weakness. Uh, so I'm good with retainer fees. I have a question. Yes, sir. Uh, regarding your experience, huh? Uh, what about your uh, peers, both your peers? They do the same thing. They don't. We do things differently here. I'm talking about the, the competency uh, and learning the market. Yes. That's why if they do the same thing, it's going to be like a rule and that will be. Um, every broker is different. Okay. Um, not all brokers are involved, not our agents. How about we talk about that, guys? We have 14,000 realtors right now. Well, let me double back. And this is real important that you guys realize this, okay? Um, a year ago, we had 1.8 million realtors. By September, 65% uh, of realtors hadn't closed one deal. Okay. Ninguna. 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 It was 65%. By the end, we had a good fourth quarter. So by 1231 of last year, it went down from 65 to 50. So 15% more people closed one more deal. So at the end of last year, one from 1.8 million people, only 900,000 people closed at least one deal. I mean, there's other people that did better, right? But at least one deal. 900,000 realtors didn't close anything. And if they haven't closed anything this year, the chances that they're not gonna renew their license, that they don't have any business, because they're not working on their business. They don't know what to do or they don't know how to save their deal, right? They're not connected. Because once again, how about we talk about the army, guys? It takes an army to raise children, but it takes an army to close a real estate transaction. Who do you need? What do you need? Well, first and foremost, you need to, to know your business, right? Know your forms and know how to explain them. You need to be knowledgeable with MLS, how to type up the contract or the, the listing. Mm -hmm. And sometimes many sellers are sellers before they're buyers. So sometimes it's two transactions, right? So you need to be competent on both sides, but you need your realtor for sure. Your realtor is the heart of the transaction. That's the reason when you walk into the builder's community, they're throwing rose petals at you. Because you bring in one thing and one thing alone. I don't, I don't care. And if you notice, they don't even write the offer. No, Mr. Realtor, we love you. We love you. You just sit there and look pretty. 
and go, yes, love the primal being. <laughs> love the appliance package, la, 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 right? You're bringing the person that's going to make them a lot of money. So you get compensated for that because you were the procuring cause. So you need the builder, you need the lender, you need the title people, the survey, the appraiser, the home inspector, the termite inspector. You need the, everybody at title and everybody's assistant, the home insurance, a home service plan. You need an army to close this deal, right? Mm -hmm. So once again, know your worth, know how to connect the dots for it all to come together for you, okay? So, I mean, once again, other agents and other brokers somewhere else, I see them online. The Every agent right now that is telling people that the compensation is subject to their offer, they're gonna they're not gonna be in business. I can I can predict that they won't be in business hopefully maybe before the end of the year. Because if you haven't had time, sit down with your glass of wine, sit down with your beer. I mean, don't get too inebriated and read your forms, understand them. And if you don't ask questions, right? You know, the the, the strong will survive. And the brokers that are that are involved, I have never done this much training, guys. I'm not doing this for me. It's a lot of work. I'm doing it for you, for you guys to survive and know that I'm here for you. I mean, I've always been here for you, but I needed to step it up. I've already been coaching for like right at eight or 12 weeks already, almost every day, you know, in preparation for this. Mm -hmm. Because I was trying to avoid the avalanche of calls by phone. There's days, guys, on Saturday, Sunday, Monday, I talked to an agent, one of our top producers. It was three o'clock and she was apologizing, man. I'm sorry, it's Sunday, it's three o'clock. You know, I mean, the rock is not going to run it she was working. Oh, I'm going, it's okay, you're like the eighth person I talked to. Oh, okay, really? I said, yeah, you're not the only one. Everybody's a mess. You know, they're confused. But you know what? You're going to make it. Just know that. So uh, it's all good. I'm, they, remember, guys, the coaching and the trainings available online. Uh, on our, our personal YouTube page, it's Premier Realty Group Platinum. Uh, our training videos are on, on our multiple websites, the mysaprg.com. It's on prgplatinum.net. There is an online university that we have through David Knox that is, a, that, that it, you know, folks, that he talks about in our lot as well. More, more than anything, the salesmanship and how to overcome objections. But, you know, for you guys that are confused, that are might even be going through a depression or thinking you're not going to survive. If you guys need to schedule a one-on-one -on -one with me uh, because you're scared to ask questions or whatever, you're more than welcome to make an appointment with my office. I'll be more than happy to sit down with you. We'll review your paperwork, guys. If you guys need us to review your paperwork, send it to support at prgplatinum.com and uh, we will, somebody will get that package to me We'll make revisions on it. If I need to jump on a call or on a Zoom call with you, I will. You guys are not alone. That's what I want you to take uh, uh, take from 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 uh, today's session is that you guys are not alone. We're going to get through it, but we need to be 100% transparent and 100% compliance. Turn in your paperwork. The moment that you're going to submit an offer, bring your entire package into compliance, upload it into the portal. We're needing to get your CDA to the to you so that way you can bless it with all the rebates. And I don't know, there's if they're referral fees, if you're paying some of their closing costs, or they're buying and selling and you're doing something special for them. Um, you need to get it to the lender, you need to get it to the title company. There's no doubt about it, guys. The lender drives the CD that stays. Same thing with your exclusive right to list. You need to get your, your compliance package to us upload it up front. That compensation needs to be disclosed immediately. The moment that that compensation isn't on our website within 24 to 48 hours and you're being bombarded with phone calls, that all could be avoided or our office gets bombarded. You need to be fully transparent because I'm gonna go on on limb, guys. I can guarantee you we're going through our, our e &O that's gonna get updated at the end of September, okay? Our ENO carrier, I can guarantee you, this settlement, this lawsuit will be considered a pre-existing issue. Therefore, they will the probability that they will be paying uh, claims having to do with compensation is zero. 
because this NAR settlement will, will be considered a pre-existing issue. Okay? So once again, protect your license. Help, let us help you protect your license. You know, but go out and conduct business. We will figure it out. If you have any questions, how many times have I taken your call? All right? Because I know that when you call me, guys, you're not calling me to ask me how I'm doing or what I'm wearing or what I'm eating that day. You're calling me for two things, guys. It's going to cost you your license. And these days, if you don't do things right, it could, it's going to cost you money. Those are two very big incentives. Okay? Sure, you can ask questions. Does anybody have questions online? Yeah. Question, you, you already have your buyer up agreement, mm -hmm. and it's saying you only did the 3% right, mm -hmm. but you go to a holder and the specific house is 4 to 5. Mm -hmm. Do we just do that one to amend it? You can amend it. Uh, you can do the amendment. I would prefer that you do. You update the long form at that moment. That way you give the appearance that it's always been that amount. Because then what? Because if you if you if, if you deal with GR Horton, I would be okay. But if you deal with that other builder, that even on their marketing material, social media material, they change things in front of your client and they don't respect anything. We know who that is, right? So once again, but if you turn in uh, a buyer's rep, long form agreement reflecting that it matched, you already know the compensation. I, I would recommend you update it rather than amend it. Okay. And my second question goes to the buyer's rep. So a lot of this team might have seen the 6% on getting the receipt for the buyer agent. But let's say that buyer agent had reduced as a 1.5 with their client. So if they make an offer, right, and they just like, yay, they got lucky and they're getting the 3%, or would we still give them the 1.5 and then the sellers keep that other 1.5? Are we still on? So what ends up happening is this, is that if the buyer's, if the buyer's rep agreement is written for 1.5 and they don't have an amendment and you're offering three, it's just like the builder offering seven and, you, and, and, and your buyer's rep agreement is saying three. The buyer, the, the title, because right now the title company is already requesting for a buyer's rep agreement. They're going to cross-reference it. We even had one. Where, they have to go and update it the way you can get it. Exactly. Exactly. So what ends up happening, we even have on a VA loan, guys, because now the, the veteran can pay for the compensation. They're wanting to see the buyer's rep agreement. We got a request in the last couple of days uh, where they the, vet, the VA appraiser was requesting the buyer's rep agreement, okay, to ensure that it was going to be in compliance with VA rules and guidelines and those kinds of things. So the, the BRA request can come from multiple places. The title company, the builder, right? The lender and the appraiser. And, and the, the thing that you said to send the people work was support at PRG Platinum, was it dot com or dot com? Dot com. Okay. So, uh, so let me bless it before you get it to your client. I'll review it. We'll talk about it, and we're we're gonna get through through this, guys. It's just a different way of doing business. It's a little bit more forms, but if you stick it out, at the end of the day, you know, uh, if your people like you and they love you and they respect you, they're gonna want to do business with you. You're good, okay? And you certainly have my personal commitment as well as my as well as my team. Now we're going to be here, guys. I'm here late on, on Monday to Friday. I come in on Saturdays, guys. I was actually here a couple of hours on Sunday as well. You know, I, I my family knows that we're going through changes. I've sat down with my girls to let them know daddy's going to have to step away and have more conversations with people. And I prepare, guys. Okay, I'm working out almost every day, daily, physically, you know, to be able to deal with this because my stress level is a little bit high right now because I get bombarded every day with questions. You know, but I'm on. Game on. Let's do this. You know, you, I will survive and you will survive. Mm -hmm. You know, I got through a recession in the 90s and we got through me and Clint and Mrs. Medina got through the worst financial crisis from 2007 through 2010. We've been through this. We're going to survive. I don't know about other agents and other brokerages, you know, because folks are focused on, you know, other things they're offering. But you need they people need to get focused on broker support. What's my broker doing to ensure that I'm gonna survive, you know, the, this 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 time of change, right? Mm -hmm. So we're here for you guys. Anybody have a question before I okay, guys? Thank you. 
remember to negotiate from a position of strength and uh, let us know if we can help in any way. Thank you.